Hello, I'm Daniel Sorensen. Today we're going to be talking about basic compositing. Now I break up compositing into two broad categories, non-realistic and realistic. Non-realistic is when you take elements that were shot at various times and places and you put them together into a single image, but there's no attempt to try and make the viewer believe that it is a single image, all shot at the same time and same space. I think a good example of this is the current Avengers movie poster, a very dynamic, exciting poster with something like 12 different characters composed into a single image. Clearly, they have not been shot at the same time. They're all different scales. Several of them are large. Most of them are much smaller. Uh, camera angles are not consistent. Lighting sources are not consistent. I would say overall, it speaks well to its audience. It uh, creates a sense of excitement and adventure, and if that's the kind of movie you're into, you see that poster, you know what the movie's about, and you know if that's a movie you're going to want to see or not. Today we're going to be doing a realistic composite, and I think technically realistic composites are much harder to pull off. A realistic composite is when images are shot at different places and times, and then you bring them together into a single image and try to convince the viewer that it is a single shot. Now in order to pull this off, there's a few things you have to keep in mind. I think first and foremost is camera angle. This is something that's really hard to cheat in Photoshop. We can manipulate perspective slightly, but if you have a two-dimensional image of a car from the side, and then you want to show it looking down on the top of the car, that's not gonna be possible. You can only pull off that sort of thing if you're using a 3D model, a 3D object. But with two-dimensional photography, we can do very little to change the camera angle. So you have to make sure that the camera angle of all of the elements match. Another thing to keep in mind is light source, mainly the direction of the light and the intensity of the light. Now this is something we can manipulate quite a bit in Photoshop. I've actually done some composites where I had to completely change the light source on some of the elements. You can pull it off, but it's going to make your life a lot easier if the images have the same light source to begin with, the same direction of light and the same intensity of light. The color of the light is pretty easy to manipulate. Okay, let's get started with our composite. Now the first thing I want to do is check my images. The plan is we're going to use this sand dune image as our final image and we're going to bring the car image into the sand dune and mask it and color correct it and hopefully make it look like it was actually shot there in the dunes. Now right away I do see some issues. The car has much more saturation, more contrast, the dunes much softer light, less contrast, less saturation. It does look like they were shot at approximately the same time of day. And I think if I flip the car, the direction of the light is going to be pretty close. But the first thing I want to do is check the image size and the resolution and see if these two images are going to work together. So I'll go up to image, image size. Now, the image should be 300. If your image is still 72, uncheck, resample, change this to 300, and then you can click this back on. So this is 13 and a half by nine at 300. I'll go over and check the dune. Okay, so this one is 20 by three and a half at 300. I know the car is gonna be relatively small in the final composition, so I think it's going to work okay. The thing to keep in mind is Photoshop is resolution dependent and we don't want to have to scale that car up if we can possibly avoid it. So let's go ahead and bring the car in and check the size. So hopefully you've watched my tutorial on combining images in Photoshop where I walk through all the different ways you can bring images into your final document. In this case, I'm going to simply use my move tool and click in the middle of my car image here, drag up and then click on the Dune tab and drag it back down into the image and it copies it into my Dunes document. Now the first thing I want to do is change this into a smart object. We want to be sure we're going to be working non-destructively. We want to make sure that we're not damaging the image in any way. So let's convert it for a smart object. There's several ways we can do that. One is we can simply go up to Layer, Smart Objects, Convert to Smart Object. Now you'll see right here the symbol that says this is a smart object. Okay, let's flip the image. So we can just do Command T, right click, and flip horizontal. Hit return, 
or click the check mark to perform the transformation. Now we can get a rough idea of the size by very loosely selecting the object and creating a rough mask or a garbage mat as it's called in video editing. So I'm going to take the lasso tool and just loosely make a selection around the car and the dust cloud and release. Now I've got a selection. Now we can just go ahead and click this third button here and that will add a mask. In this case, it reveals the selected area. Now we could put a little bit of a feather on this just so that it looks a little bit nicer until we do a proper mask. Several ways we could do that. One very quick and easy way is to open up the properties panel. With the mask selected, we can simply feather the mask right here and that will soften it up and make it look a little bit better while we're checking for the size. Okay, I'm going to take the move tool and move this down. Uh, okay, so the distance between the wheels and the distance between the tread marks and the sand should match up. So I'm going to zoom in here and take a look. This looks pretty good to me. It's pretty close. So I'm going to go ahead and go with this. Okay, now I'm going to use the pen tool to create a proper selection around the car. So I'm just going to move the car in while I'm creating the mask, and then I will probably move it back out so that the dust cloud goes off the image so that I don't have to deal with this hard edge here. I'm going to select the pen tool. You can just press P on your keyboard. One thing you want to make sure of is that it says path up here and not shape. With path selected, it's going to create a path that's going to be recorded here in the paths panel. Paths are independent of layers. They have nothing to do with the layers and they're completely non-destructive. If shape were selected, we'd be creating a new vector shape layer. That's not what we want in this case. If you're new to the pen tool, it can be a little tricky to work with at first. So I suggest you watch my tutorial on working with the pen tool first and then come on back and finish up this tutorial. I'm going to hold down the uh, command spacebar and zoom in here a little bit. Okay, so basically the way the pen tool works is you click and drag to create a curve and if you just click you'll get a corner point without these direction lines on it, these handles. These handles allow us to modify the curve. Now I'm putting in quite a few points here along the dust cloud because I want it to look very organic and irregular. But when I get to the car, I'm going to use as few points as possible because it's smooth metal. And the more points you have, the more opportunity you have to end up with a bump. So smooth surfaces, we want to use as few points as possible. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit more. Now you can hold down the command key to get the direct selection arrow to move both the anchor points around and the direction handles around. So let's say I move that one up there a little bit and then I can try. Now you see I get this loop here so I can hold down the command key and pull this one back down so that that fits better along that edge. So the idea is we want to click and drag along the edge of the car And again, use as few points as we can. The tendency when you're new to this tool is to put down a lot of points because it makes you feel like you've got more control. But that's actually going to uh, cause problems for you later on. So try to do it with as few as possible. Now up here, I want to change direction. See, I don't want to get a big loop here. So if I hold down the option key, that will pull in that direction handle. I can change direction. A little hard to see what's going on here. Pull down the space bar, pull that out. I'll move this one over a little bit. Okay, then I'm going to hold down the option key to change direction.
Okay, so I've done most of the car. Um, I've decided to keep this piece here in the front. I think that's part of the um, undercarriage of the car, front end of the car. We are going to create our own shadow, so I'm going to be getting rid of this shadow. It's a little hard to tell what's going on in here, so I'm just going to kind of guess in this area and I have to guess where the tire is. I'm holding the space bar just to move around and come on up in here. And now we're back over to the dust where I'm going to put quite a few points just to make it feel a bit more organic. Okay, I'll zoom out a little bit and close the path. Now we want to save the path simply by double clicking on the path in the paths panel and you could name it or you can just leave it as path one click OK and now when you save the document this path will be permanently saved with your document if you don't name it then when you click off it and start to create a new path the previous path that you just created will be replaced it'll disappear so whenever it's called a work path it's volatile and it will disappear so you want to make sure that you save the path you don't want to lose all your hard work now we're going to turn the path into a selection and modify the mask so we have a nice clean mask. We can make a selection a number of ways. You can command click on the thumbnail. That loads a selection. I'll deselect that one. With the path highlighted you could select this third button and that makes a selection. Again with the path selected you could come up here and do select. And if you wanted to you could add a feather here. Okay, we are going to want a feather eventually because we need a semi-soft edge to make the car look volumetric. Otherwise, if it has a hard edge, it could look like it's just been cut out with a pair of scissors and stuck on the pictures. So that's going to destroy our illusion of this being actually in this environment. If it were in the environment, light would fall off the edge of the car and that would give us the illusion of volume. So we do need a soft edge. I don't know how much of a feather I want right at this point, so we can add the feather at any time. But I want to warn you about a gotcha right now. We used the properties panel to add a feather when we did the garbage map, and that is still set way up here. And so if we create a selection now and then modify the mask, it is going to have this huge feather on it, and that is not what we want. So make sure you pull that back to zero and then make a selection. Any of the ways we just talked about, I'm just going to command click on the thumbnail. Now, let's think about this for a minute. I want you to remember the phrase that black conceals, white reveals. So the area that's white is what we're going to see. The area that's black on the mask, and if I hold the option key, we can look at the mask. The area that's black gets hidden, the area that's white is revealed. So we want to make this outside white area black. So what we have to do is inverse the selection. I'm going to zoom out here a little bit and then show you. If I go up here to select inverse, now here's the key command. My recommendation is whenever you see a key command, don't use it from the menu. Go back and actually use the key command. So that's Command Shift I. So now the opposite area is selected. I can see that right here. Now if I fill it with black, and I want to make sure that this is on black and white, so again you can hit, you can hit D to get to pure black and white, X to toggle black to the foreground, and then my favorite key command for fill with the foreground color is Option Delete. So you could also do uh, up here fill, and then you would choose foreground color. Okay, now I'm going to option click on this again to take a look and then deselect command D. Now let's zoom in here and take a look at the edge of our car. As I said, it's a very hard edge and so we need to soften it. So it looks like it belongs in this environment and that the light is falling off the edge. There's a great feature in Photoshop that lets us modify the mask. And so if I click on the mask itself and I go up under Select, Select and Mask, oh, here we have Command Option R. That brings up this interface. 
And I want you to make sure here we have on layers selected. That gets rid of the marching ants. And it lets us see how the composite actually is going to look. So we can add a feather. And you see what's happening is it's feathering outside of that selection. So I need to pull this in a little bit. So here I can shift the edge and then I can add a little contrast, which will harden the edge. So I can play back and forth with primarily these three sliders to get the look I'm after. Now, if you had a lot of points on your path, you may see that you've got some bumps along the way. That's where smoothing would help out. You could help get rid of some of those bumps by modifying the smooth value here. All right, so this actually looks pretty good to me. I zoom in here. It looks pretty soft and looks pretty good. Could be maybe slightly, bit, a little slightly more. Now, I know that I'm going to have to work on the, uh, the dust cloud. That has got to be modified by hand. And it has to be far softer than the edge of the car. The edge of the car has to be relatively hard. I'm going to say OK. And next we're going to work on softening the dust cloud. OK, I'm going to work on the mask with a brush now. So I'll select the brush tool. I want to use just a soft round brush. I'm going to turn on the airbrush effect right here and lower the flow down a little bit. And I'll probably make it slightly smaller. So you can change the size by using your left or right brackets. Or you could also click up here and modify the size here. So I'm at about 70 pixels and I have it very soft all the way over to the left. I think I might lower this a little bit so that it hides a little more slowly. So I get a little bit more of a gradual transparency. I know I've got to get in there. When I want to get in close to the car here, I've got to make my brush much smaller. So left bracket, and I'll come in here. If you're in the airbrush mode, you can use your numbers to modify the flow. So if I hit 1, it's going to go to 10. And so I can just slowly reduce this area, and maybe this area a little bit, just lighten up those dark areas. We are going to completely color correct this and change these colors, but dark areas are hard to color correct, so we, I think we don't want those. Okay, so now I want to go back up uh, in my flow percentage, so I'll hit 7 for 70 and come on up here and clean this up. Spacebar. That. I'll deal with that back end in a minute. Go on here. Again, I'm just clicking and clicking. I'm not doing any straight drags because I, I want it to look, you know, more organic. So I'm kind of irregular, making sort of irregular strokes and kind of click, click, click. Now again, this looks awfully dark in here. So I'm going to hit one to go to. 10 and just lower the opacity on this. I think that'll make it easier when we color correct. Crank it back up to 70 and continue along here. This is totally non-destructive, so if I need to come back and lighten these areas more or bring them back, I can easily do that because it's a layer mask and I'm not actually erasing any pixels. All the original pixels are still there undamaged. Let me keep some of this dust. Okay, now one thing I want you to do is option click 
on the mask. We have to take a look at this edge. We have to make sure that we don't have any hard edges along this. See, like right in here. That's kind of hard. I need to soften that edge. Because a lot of times these won't show up on screen, but then they can show up when they print. We don't want that. We want to make sure those hard edges are gone. Also, in some of these, I got a little bit of kind of dirty, smutchy stuff out here that I didn't cover real well, so you want to make sure you get rid of that too. So that looks pretty good. So option click, bring it back, and command zero to look at the whole thing. I'm going to switch to the move tool. If we want to move the car so that the uh, dust cloud is going out of the picture, that's going to make our life a lot easier. If for some reason we need to have it in here, then we're going to have to come in here and modify that back with our brush. So we could do it, you know, something sort of organic like this. But in this case, I think I'm going to do it the easy way and just move that over so that it is going out of the picture. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is start color correcting both the car and the sand dune to make it look like they are actually part of the same image, to make it actually look like this car was shot in that environment. And we're going to look at a number of different techniques for color correction.